into the administrator dashboard of Connecting. And again, this is just run through an internet browser. You don't do it through an app or a hard download. It's just through your internet browser. So on here, this is kind of our main dashboard. So I've already uploaded our logo up here at the right hand or upper left hand corner. So you see that. And then you have your profile and your company code. But this is just the activity dashboard. This one, we don't really need a whole lot. It is nice to see sometimes, especially if we post something important information, you can see, you know, when students check it or when they open it on their phones, so you can see there's kind of a spike here and then it tapers off and whatnot. Um, there may be any alerts or notifications here, so you can see that. Um, and otherwise, there's some quick actions here if you need to add a user. So for example, a user would be a new VIP if we need to do that. Um, and then some other quick action items, and I'll run through it shortly here. Most of the action will happen over here on this sidebar. So if you click this teeny tiny little arrow and expand it, then you can see the details rather than just the icons. So again, right now we're in the overview. If you go to users, this is where you'll find everyone's information. So you can see everyone here um, under mobile users. If you click the tab here, there would be admins. So we'll, I'll add the necessary ones in here. And then archives, for example, that would be any former VIPs or whatnot, if we want to just keep those in file for maybe later use. But otherwise you can see everyone here, their first name, last name, title. I pretty much just named everyone a VIP or VIP admin, depending on the department that we're under and when they were added. And then it is nice, you can see like the last mobile login or something like that. Then in smart groups, again, you don't need to worry about this if you don't want to, but this is just grouping everyone together. So for example, this is just putting them all in a VIP group. So since we really only have one group, you don't need to go too in detail with that, but it's there. Now under communications, the chat functionality, this is similar to what our group me is. So the group chat for everyone. So for example, you can do an all users team chat. If you want to message everyone and have back to forth conversations, you can do that. It is nice. You can write a message. You can also click the little paperclip icon and you can attach a file, an image, video, whatever you need to, especially if you need to communicate something to them. So you can do that, or for example, we can do one-on-one -on -one conversations. So for example, I sent a quick message to Stella about her scheduling preference. So you can do one-on-one -on -one or a whole group chat. So there's that. Under resources then, resources is kind of what you would think. It's gonna be files, documents, training materials, et cetera. This has not been built out a whole lot yet. I've started to do it a little bit. So for example, you'll see VIP training manual, information, admission staff. So this is kind of just a reference point for the students um, if they need to review information or need access to something such as like the admission staff, if you click on that one. Again, it gives you all the data and insights, which is really nice um, to see who's looked at it. And then if you click preview, so this is what it would look like for the students on their mobile device. They could click admission staff email list, and then all of our emails are right there. So for example, in virtual presentations, if they need a Zoom link resent, they can say, hey, Josh, can you send me the Zoom link for this? I can't get in or something like that. So it's just good for them to have it anyways. It can be a little cumbersome to find on Grand Valley's general website. So chat, resources, updates. Updates are really helpful, especially kind of sharing quick notes and reminders with all of them. Updates, think of that as like a Facebook post or a Facebook update, essentially. So here again, this is just kind of an archive of everything that I've posted so far. If you wanna click on a specific one, I'll just show you what it would look like. So for example, campus mass policy update. I posted this to everyone and when the campus updated our mask policy, I simplified it and I said outdoors, no mask, indoors mask. And then you can link it to the official 
website so they can look, you know, specifically at what it is. Or similarly, if you need to link it to another page or website. Um, and again, I can see who's used it, who didn't view it, all of that. Um, if we go back to updates, I'll show you another one. One that I did, especially since we had a lot of new VIPs this summer, I said Honors College, um, just directing them to resources. You know, if you have some downtime, review this information about the Honors College so you can best answer the questions. So again, click the little link and it will take you to the Honors page in their About the Program information. So again, updates are just like any other update on social media, quick notes, reminders, etc. Directory is really handy. Again, if you just kind of need to get in contact with students or anyone, it does require, this app does require everyone's mobile phone number to be entered. So if you need to call, text, or etc., or you can click on them and get their full details provided, but just nice quick directory. You can send text messages as well throughout this. So you can do a new text message. Uh, so for example, one that I sent a while back was make sure you submit your hours into ultra time if you haven't done so already. Um, so yeah. And then I'll skip down to operations. They do have a time clock. We don't really use that because we still need to use ultra time through GVSU. So the next one would be job scheduling. This is kind of the meat of why we decided to do this or use this app. So there's a VIP scheduler. You can click access schedule. And then this is where the schedule will be for all the VIPs. So right now you can do it. You can view it week by week. You can view it a month at a time. It's a little bit harder to see though, or you can even do a daily view. So if we just go to week, on the far left-hand column are the different jobs. So we're viewing it by jobs. So there's two primary jobs, the front desk admin, so on the third floor there, and then just the VIP tour. So just the general VIPs going out on tour. So you'll see the front desk admin, it's pretty much eight to five, and who's assigned to us. You'll see Eldon, eight to five, Katie, eight to five on Tuesday, etc. If you were to click on it, you'll get full details of the shift. So start eight to five, what the title is, whose Eldon is the user on this one, location, you can enter specifically our address, any notes or attachments, you can add that there as well. For the VIP tours, again, this is all kind of preloaded. So I've created templates for each tour. So there's a template for the 9 a.m. tour, the 11, etc and then just plug in the users accordingly. So if we look at, for example, the 9 a.m. one, you can quick hover over it and see who the users are assigned to that shift, and then click in the details. I have it scheduled for about 9 to 10.30 a.m. Obviously, they may go a little over or whatever, but just rough estimate for scheduling purposes. 9 a.m. group presentation plus tour is the name of it. And then everyone who's here, and then the locations, the Laker Experience Suite, and then the notes that I have added in this one, you know, be prepared to depart the suite by 9.30 a.m. And I did upload the tour route and talking points on all of these. So especially if someone is new, I know we don't encourage cell phone usage while they're on a VIP or on a tour, but if they need a quick sneak and, you know, get some statistics or something, that's there for them. So then that's just repeated. I didn't change anything, so this card changes. Um, so then that's repeated for all of them. And the nice thing is once that you build like a week, so when we have a new week or a new schedule, I just need to make the week once and then you can copy and paste. So primarily I'm anticipating Melanie and I to use this functionality the most, um, but everyone else is just nice and easy to see where someone is and who's in you know, this tour, et cetera. For the students on their mobile app version, they can request uh, to exchange a shift with somebody through the app. If they do that, so for example, if Austin decides to switch with Stella for the 3 p.m., if they make that switch in the app on their own, it'll automatically adjust on here. So, you know, a lot of times they're still in the habit of letting us know, but if they figure it out, great. 
Um, and we could see that, you know, Austin switched it out with somebody else. So it automatically updates here. So that's the main functionality. Chat, if you need to message somebody, updates if you're sending kind of a general broadcast to all students, and then the scheduling tool within the operations function. Um, it's pretty intuitive once you get the hang of it, um, and it is very nice for the students on the mobile version, but again, we're still kind of getting them to migrate to it and make that switch.